It has been way too long since I've been able to get out into the mountains of southern Arizona. But, conveniently for me, it rained for the first time in weeks right as I got my new car working. Needless to say, I dropped just about everything to go exploring the mountains of southern Arizona once again. Now I've made my first stop for today at rather high elevation, and uh, it's cold, but much to my surprise, there are definitely still ants active. Uh, I just saw a formica worker. So it seems that despite it being freezing and also mid-September, the formica do still have pupae. And these are formica. They're uh, some very tiny little Neogagates group formica, but they are formica that you get pretty commonly up here. And especially once the sun comes out, they're going to be sunning those pupae under the rocks to get them hatched out before winter comes. Which, uh, up here at high, high elevation, it's not too far off. Not at all. Which, <laughs> it's crazy to think that here, winter is only maybe about a month away until we start seeing, you know, snowfall. Well, I say we, I'm not going to be here, but until this mountain starts seeing a bunch of snowfall and all the ants, especially up here at higher elevation, are going to go into hibernation. Because back in Phoenix, where I live, it's still over 100 degrees every day and will be over 80 for the next two months at least. Elevation's a crazy thing, man. I've lived here for four years and it's still pretty wild to me. Well, it seems like the laciest this high up are done producing their uh, pupae, but they still have tons of larvae. Tons and tons of it. I don't know if maybe they have got some pupae down below and they're just finishing these up, but I bet that these are going to be larvae that they hibernate with. And all the workers are really fat. You can tell they're gorged up on sugars to get ready for hibernation. It's super cool. Just next to those laceus, there's actually a Myrmica colony. I never really get high enough elevation to see these guys, so, so it's pretty cool that they just kind of happen to show up. Got some nice laceus here. I'm thinking these are probably Cotolaceus, like Laceus brevicornis. Because they're little yellow guys, but they're not... They don't remind me of the uh, parasitic Laceus. They're a little small and their yellow isn't quite as uh, deep and, and vibrant. It's a little bit more, more mute. But that doesn't mean that I don't like them. They're cute. I really do like Laceus a lot. Check this out, got a massive termite colony. Looks like probably Reticulotermes. And Campanotus vicinus under the same rock. Bet you these Campanotus are eating good. Oh yeah, look. She knows what's up. All right, this is pretty cool. This is probably the largest Temnothorax rugatulus colony I've ever seen. And they're ready for hibernation. They're, they've got all their small larvae ready to, to hibernate with. And while these are a common Temnothorax, well, it's a good species to be common because they're pretty. Don't see any queens on the rock, but I'm sure they have multiple. Let's see down in here. Not really seeing any, so for once they're actually doing a good job at hiding their queens. Normally they are not. Uh, that or I'm just blind and completely missing them. You're welcome to yell at me in, in the comments if that's the case. But I think that that is pretty cool. You don't normally see these colonies get this giant. At least I don't. After my quick morning stint at an elevation of almost 9,000 feet, I decided to head a little bit lower to see if I could find any ants that were a little bit more active. We've got some Festinatus group Campanotus that are still fully developing, pupae and larvae and everything, which is cool. It means we're low enough to where the ants don't think it's winter yet, but we are still pretty well into the pine forest. So 
Still gonna get some uh, cool stuff going on here, I think. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. This is three rocks back to back now with this Campanota species. There's one here, there's one under that rock, and the one that I showed you first is under that rock. Just, just for proof, by the way. This is getting absurd. There are too many of you. So, of course, uh, I'm here on a mission. Part of the reason why I've been talking about all this, uh, well, whether or not the ants have pupae or whether or not they think it's winter is because I'm here to collect Laceus pupae for a good friend of mine for some parasitic queens. I mean, obviously I'm here because I want to get out in the field and because I want to make content for you guys, but I mean this mountain specifically to get Laceus pupae. And this right here that I'm at right now is my spot for Laceus. So we'll see. We'll see if the Laceus think it's winter or not. Down here about 2,000 feet lower, actually a little over 2,000 feet lower in elevation than the ones that I showed you earlier that just had larvae. So I'm hoping that these guys will still have uh, a nice full generation of pupae that I can uh, plunder. Well, consider me surprised, but there is totally a nuptial flight happening in this canyon. It appears to be Laceus males. So I guess when I said that this spot was good for Laceus, I was right. I don't see any queens. It looks like just males so far. But that's, that's very interesting because it's still kind of early in the morning. I'd expect maybe afternoon flights from these guys. And it's really not particularly warm. But I guess with how much it rained last night and the fact that it's been dry for a couple weeks was enough. Cool. Maybe I'll find some queens running around. Now, unlike that nuptial flight, here is something that I'm not at all surprised to see. Prenolepis in Paris. These guys are pretty widespread throughout Arizona, but aren't found too often. But on a cold, wet day like this, this species is going to thrive. They love cold weather. And so, seeing them with a big, nice trail through the forest here, on a day like this, is not even remotely surprising. Especially considering that I have found them here in the past on a day with much worse conditions. So, yeah, they definitely are here. Well, not seeing any pupae from these Laceus, but they have callos. So they've... They... Unless I missed all the pupae by like a day, they've got to be in there somewhere. Guys, I can confirm the Laceus still have pupae. Now, I need a lot more than this, but it's a pretty good start if you ask me. Well, I finally found a queen in this nuptial flight, and she's going to be the most fertile queen ever. Look at her. She's covered. But it is just a kind of regular looking Laceus queen. Oh my gosh. Unless that's... Well, I can't even really get a good look at her. It might be... No, there's no way that's Prenolepis. It's gotta be Laceus. But oh my goodness, look at her. She can't... she can't do anything. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever seen this kind of a reaction from males on a queen. Now, I'm not surprised. I've seen probably a thousand males and this one queen. But, uh, wow. That is certainly something. This is honestly one of the craziest flights I've seen. And that says a lot considering I've seen Atta flights. I mean, look at that. You can't even see the queen in there. That's ridiculous. But, like, you can tell, there's queens in those two piles. Jeez, that is, it's absurd. Never seen anything like it. The more I think about it, the more I realize this is probably Prenolepis. They look very similar to Laceus. They're in the same tribe, so I'm not surprised that I mistook it. Especially considering that Prenolepis are supposed to fly in, like, February. And it is very distinctly not February. It is the middle of September. So I don't know what they're doing, but I've kind of noticed their behavior in the, like, the workers and everything. And 
The way the flight is reminds me of Pernilepis flights I've seen in Illinois, but the queens look super different, which I guess makes sense considering I'm like 2,000 miles away from where I've seen them before. But it's totally Pernilepis and not Laceus. Which is kind of exciting. I've never caught Pernilepis in Arizona before, even though I don't really like them, but <laughs> it's cool. It's a species I've never caught in Arizona before, which doesn't come about that often, I'll tell you. Well, while the Laceus colonies may not have as much pupae at the surface as they do during the early summer, like for example, when I've come here in May, the colonies can have hundreds, if not over a thousand pupae right at the surface under a rock because, well, they're in full developmental swing. They're producing a ton, a ton, a ton of workers. Now they're kind of just fizzling out into the winter, and so each colony only has maybe 100 pupae at most. The good news is there's no shortage of Laceus colonies, so my dear friend and his Laceus Laytypes queens uh, should be able to have plentiful hosts uh, to raise some nice biological workers. I at least certainly hope so. Now, I had to kind of hike up the canyon to find the Laceus colonies, which are under just about every single one of these rocks that you see. But there's no Prenolepis flying up there. All the Prenolepis are flying down the canyon. So I'm going to head back down there uh, and see if the flight has progressed without me missing it. And maybe I can snag myself a couple more queens. Well, it seems the flight has indeed progressed. Is there even a queen in there? Yeah, looks like it. I can't hardly tell which of these balls of males actually have a queen in them. But there's a lot. There's a lot more than when I first got here. Look at this. You can see it's happening right in front of a colony. These guys just released basically all these elates. And now they're just mating right on the front doorstep. You know, normally daytime flying species like this kind of suck to find. Now, how am I supposed to find tiny little brown ant queens in this? But with Prenolepis, it becomes a lot easier because they're highlighted by a ball of a hundred males swarming them at all times. It's a lot harder to miss this stumbling around than if she was uh, just alone. It's crazy. Like, at this point, and I do think this is pretty normal, but the queens basically just walk out of the nest and immediately get swarmed by the dozens and dozens of males they're all flying around. They, they don't even get the chance to take off. I tell you, it's really interesting watching these nuptial flights because I, I think I understand why Prenolepis managed to be so successful despite, as far as I've read, the colonies only produce, you know, in the tens of queens. You know, they're not producing hundreds upon hundreds of queens. And well, it makes sense. They're flying on cold, wet days when not a whole lot is active, and they way overcompensate the number of males. I mean, they're releasing over 100 males per queen, it seems like. So obviously the queens are going to be fertile. Obviously they're going to survive. I haven't seen a single one getting predated. So it, it just makes sense. Why would I waste, you know, resources making tons and tons of these big, bulky queens when I don't need to? It's really cool. I will say, watching this Pernilepis flight go down is giving me an appreciation for a species that I haven't really given any thought to since I started ant keeping six years ago, over six years ago. I haven't seen a flight from these guys since I moved out of Illinois in 2020, so it's been over four years since I've seen a flight from this species, and any flight that I had in Illinois was not nearly to this scale. Um, just... Being in Arizona, having this much undisturbed habitat means that the population is way healthier. So there's just a lot more colonies releasing a lot more elates. And uh, it's, it's awesome. Even though a lot of people don't really pay attention to these ants or don't really like them, you, you can't ever hate on a good nuptial flight, that's for sure. It is so cool. Well, with the Prenolepis flight done, with... Laceus pupae collected. I'm kind of done here. There's not a whole lot for me to do other than have fun and enjoy myself. And I was really considering camping here tonight, and I, I still don't hate that idea, but I'm kind of hungry. I'm kind of tired. I think I'm just going to check out this low elevation area and then call it. 
because uh, it'd be kind of a waste not to check out the lower elevation parts of this mountain before I leave. Well, hello, Laceous Sishians. I don't really see these guys that often. They're usually pretty difficult to, uh, to find because they live at low elevations, uh, low enough that they tend to spend a lot of their time pretty far underground. But I guess with how wet it is, they decided to come up to the surface and say hi. Hey, there's something cool. A big, huge Fidoli Desertorum colony. It's nice down here at this low of elevation. It's... And it's practically like it's still summer. Everything is still producing and active. It's great. And with that, I decided that I'd had my fill and I was ready to get headed home. But it was great to get out in the field again. And I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along. Of course, a like and a subscribe would help a lot. And thank you very much for watching.